My name's Victoria and welcome to Westside Library's virtual painting class for September. This month we will be painting a fall landscape. If you have reserved your kits, they are ready for pickup here at Westside Library. If you have not reserved a kit, give us a call at 318-442-2483 to see if we have a kits available. All right, let's get painting. All right, so in your kit, you are going to have a traceable, which is the drawing of the covered bridge and the fence. And you're going to have carbon paper, so you can transfer the image onto the canvas. Canvas and your paint. What you're going to need are your paint brushes. Now, really, um, you're going to need a large paint brush. Um, I'm using a 3 4 inch flat. Um, I have a medium flat, which is a 5 8 um, a smaller ish one, a number four, and then a liner brush. And uh, liner brushes I use for the outline, and then you're probably going to be using these two the most. Okay, so put your paint brushes aside for the moment. Um, besides your paint brushes, you're going to need a plate to put your paint on, cups of some water, good old paper towel. All right, so the first thing you want to do is take your canvas. You're going to put your carbon paper shiny side down, and then you lay your traceable on top of it. We are using a 8 by 10 canvas, so if you line up the edge of your paper where your bridge is right here with the edge of your canvas, um, it'll be centered where you, your bridge will be centered and on your canvas and we're ready to go. So you're just going to take your pencil and just trace over the image. And when you do that, your image will be transferred onto your canvas. All right. So... You notice my canvas has a little bit more detail than what is on the traceable in your kit. When you are finished transferring your image onto the canvas, you're going to rough some stuff in. You have your fence, your covered bridge, and your horizon line here and here. You're going to draw in a the back, the road coming from the back of the covered bridge. Always remember that this is your foreground perspective. This is your foreground. It is, this will look bigger. This is the back. So you're going, you're looking further away at it, so you want it to be smaller. So the road here in the foreground is larger, wider, and I'm looking away. So when I sketched in the road, I made it narrower. And it's basically, it is just two perpendicular lines, straight lines. And you just rough them in. And then on this side, you're just going to put in some additional lines right here about that like third fence post. Just rough in a straight line and then go up about the width of your thumbnail and rough in another straight line. This is going to be this part and this part are going to be your river. And then 
right above here, go up just a smidge. And just draw another line. That's going to be your horizon line. Okay, so I'm going to mark here on my canvas. This is going to be R for river, river, land, land, land. All right. All right. If you kind of want to practice this before you do it on your canvas, you can take the traceable and rough this in to give you some practice. Um, but once you have it done, your landscape is going to be look roughly like this laid out. All right. So after we have our um, building and our landscape roughed in, we get to the fun part. We get to start painting. So, um, first off, I am going to do my sky. The colors you get in your kit, you're getting a uh, sky blue, you have a green, yellow, red, white, black, and orange. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do my sky. Which I'm going to just take some of the blue. And I'm going to take a little bit of my white. And I'm going to bring some of my blue out. I'm going to mix it in with a little bit of my white. And I'm going to start now I'm using what is in your kit is called a panel canvas it is completely flat I am using a frame canvas and because I'm using a frame canvas um, the canvas goes over the sides like this so if you ever use canvas like that just remember to paint your sides. Also, if this is a sky, since this is a sky, if it has some striations of white in it, don't worry about it. I'm going to switch now to a slightly smaller brush. That is That's my preference. Some people like using the big brushes.
I like a smaller brush as I cut in close to the buildings. All right. Now, as I get close to the building, I'm actually going to be using the edge of my brush. And I'm just going to go across like that, and then I'm going to take and smooth it out. Once again, when I'm real close to that building, I'm going to use the edge and then smooth it out. And I always want to keep enough paint on my brush that where you feel the paint is flowing as you paint. Um, and you can tell if there's not enough brush on paint on your brush because it'll feel like it's pulling. And I have the sky roughed in. I'm gonna put a little bit more blue on my hand, but <gasps> and I'm gonna paint in the water. Once again, when I'm close to my edges, I'm going to use the edge of my bristles and come in Through with the blue for the moment. Okay. Alright, 
and I'm gonna use just a little bit of green. And I was doing something which I always tell you guys not to do, which is leave your paintbrush in the water. This is not good for them. start with the green. Yeah, I'm using that 5 8 flat. I'm noticing on my sky, there's some places I missed. So I'm gonna go back. And get those. To switch plates because I want to keep my I think I want to keep my reds and oranges and yellows separate my blues and greens okay so I'm gonna get a little bit of red and we are gonna start in on our covered bridge 
I'm actually going to switch to a little bit smaller brush that size four. All right, and I'm just going to start. I'm going to go over my lines. I'm off on that. Let's go over those lines. And I'm just going to fill it up. rough in a road so that I'm going to use I'm gonna, the road's going to be gray so we're going to use a little white and a little black black and about twice as much white. And I'll mix it together so I get a nice gray.
I need. Come back to my green. Looks like I'm going over the pencil lines, but the green paint is thin enough where I can still make out the pencil marks. I'm gonna break out Mr. Line Brush. I'm gonna take some black. I'm gonna start going over. I'm just gonna go back over, make our fence rails. Our first part of our fin. Right. Right. And now on the other side of that fence, we're going to do that same thing.
work out our liner brush again and go back to our black And if you ever find it difficult to do these very small lines in with a liner brush, you can try using a paint pen. I know some of you probably have one at home. Other use if you don't. Paint pens are really cool because, especially if you're doing fine lines or lettering, it's easier to control than a paintbrush. If you use it just, you would use it just like you would a regular pen. We have a bridge. All right. So back to our covered bridge, we're going to do a second coat of red on it. All right. All right. 
All right, I'm gonna take a little bit of black and we'll mix it with some red. As so we're gonna start shading some of our covered bridge. I got kind of a darky maroon color and then I just have one that's a little bit darker red. Like it went from a bright red to a crimson. Okay. Uh -huh. All right, so I'm, gonna so I'm gonna take some of that really dark, almost maroon color, and I'm gonna do, what are the edges of my building? Yeah, because if you look at my paint palette, it is almost, it's almost like this purple color. And what I'm doing is I'm taking, I'm doing, I'm at the edge of my brush, I'm doing like that. Clean my brush. I'm gonna get some white and we're gonna do that roof. I'm gonna clean what 
that off and I'm gonna pick up some more of this. Not too much on my brush. just pull and as you work in that kind of purpley almost eggplant color you get like a nice little depth to your root I've just picked up my liner brush because I want a definite outline to that roof. I take the bigger brush and just soften the lines a little bit. Just smudge it. All right, and I'm gonna pick up my liner brush again. So I'm gonna take some of this crimson shade of red and I'm gonna take, and I'm just gonna run lines down the side. Of my covered bridge at intervals and you wanna keep on the intervals even as what it is is this is going to be your boards as if you look at a photograph of like these covered bridges or if you've ever had a chance to go up to New England and look you know and do the fall foliage tours and you'll see they're made out of their clapboard bridges um so think of look when you look at it think about like a wood fence Yeah. Oh. Yeah, garden bridge. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so we've kind of, we're finished with our covered bridge for right now. Okay. Well, kind of. You're going to pick up some black and you're going to paint in that center part. with our covered bridge we have the fence now it is time to pay attention to our foreground we're going back to our green oh matt could you hand me the paper towel Thank you. All right. All right. I'm using that SAS4 brush again. a second coat of green. In the kits, some of you have a 
like a lighter like grass green and then some of you have almost like a dark like hunter green so i'm using more of like the forest green one so if you have the darker green you might not need a second coat just look at it and decide on like if you how you like it if you think you need a second coat put on a second coat if you think you're good with one do one All right, and I'm going to go in between the fence posts a little bit. And darken that green too. All right. Now we're going to add some brown and then we're, and the brown is going to be a riverbank. to kind of smudge into that green. Right here, I want it a little bit darker, so I'm going to pick up some of that black. Remember, when you're using black, black goes a long way. So honestly, when you're mixing black with the color, you almost want to plan where it's a one to two or three ratio. that one part black to like two or three parts of another color. I'm still thinking this is too dark, so I'm picking up another, some more brown to mix in as I want this more brown, like maybe almost like a dark chocolate color. Then a black, yeah. Okay. Still think I have like too much on my brush. I kind of like some black and some green in there. Okay. Like this really kind of muddy green brown color. All right.
somehow. You're going to use that brown and that black. I'm just going to cut in with a river bank. And if you feel like you've gone too wide, like I did there, you can just go back in with the blue. Actually, why I have my blue out of my this side of the river, I'm gonna go over with another coat. I just think it needs another coat of paint. Yeah, you know, whether or not you put a second coat or that's gonna be dependent on you. It is how do you like it? Do you think it? Do you like the depth of blue it is right now? Um. Do you want to be it darker, lighter? Um, if you want it, the water to be a little lighter, add white. If you want to go up in value, add a little black. Just remember, a little black goes a long way. Um, okay. So, kind of like where I am right now with like my river. So, I'm going to rinse off my brush. And I'm going to break out the, get my liner brush out again. And I'm going to break out the solid white. And I don't want a lot of paint on my brush, just a little bit. It's almost, and kind of make some squiggly lines for a current. Okay. Okay, so you have like your little white wavy lines for your current. Right. Now back to your green. I want a little bit more green. As right now, it's it's incredibly flat. So what are we gonna do with it? I am gonna use some more green. I'm gonna get a little white. And if you were with us for the firefly painting, this is same thing. We're gonna start Mix it off where it's thick a little bit. Just a little bit lighter than what's on the canvas right now. And we're gonna do like a V and then come in and paint one in the center. And we're just gonna keep making those Vs on the canvas. Now 
And as I go, and I want a little bit, I want a darker black, darker green too. So I'm gonna take some green and mix it with some black. So I can have a dark. So basically you're, you're gonna have like a light green that's almost pale and then like almost a mint and then you're gonna have like a dark. And I goofed because I added way too much black into my green. So I ended up basically with gray. So we're gonna start again. We're gonna take just a dab of black and start adding it to the green. Let me get this lovely. Okay. All right. We got a nice contrast going on. So we're going to do that. And so right now, this is like really like one dimensional. So I want to pick up some of that lighter green. Just go on top. I'm just kind of making those bees. All right. Now I'm gonna go and pick up some light green. this on this side and take the dark green and make some V's and then we're gonna pick up some of the light green make some V's on top of that We're gonna 
want to over here. And do some light green. Alright. And then we're going to take over here. I'm going to do some small these. Some of the dark green, and then we're going to go with the light green. I think I'm going to add some of the It still kind of looks dull in between those poles, so I'm going to take some a little bit of dark green. And I'm going to make very small of these. I'm going to take some of the light green. Go back. Go back over some of that. If it looks too light, put some dark. If it looks too light, put some. If it looks too dark, put some light. If it looks too light, put some dark. I stop and think of what I said. Oh, All right, and I'm gonna go up. We're going to do the same thing on the other side of the fence. I'm just going to make ten of It looks dark, put some light. Kind of look over your fence rail, see if anything got too smudged. If it does, if it did, go over with some black. Considering we got plenty of black. So we have our grass in, we have our river done, we have our covered bridge. So kind of, all right. All right, so we're gonna put that over here for a second. I'm gonna get my yellow out. And I'm gonna use my liner brush again. And we're going to put little, you know, the median and on our road. So just like in the center, put some yellow dashes every long way. Try to keep them even. Okay. We 
got a road. All right. So my stone palette, which I have some red, I'm gonna put a little brown because we're almost at the end and we're gonna start on our trees. Go with the green. Some white. Put some yellow. I'm gonna put some more red. And a smidge of orange. Uh, I'm gonna put some more white. And we don't need any more brown. And we do not need any more black. All right. All right. I need to make sure my liner is clean. And I'm going to go back to that size four. All right. So you're looking at your painting, remember, perspective, this is closer up than this. So this is farther away. So when I'm drawing in my tree trunks, my tree trunks over here are going to be bigger. They're going to be wider. And the further away I get, the skinnier they're going to be. So, um... I actually think I'm gonna take my pencil and I'm gonna kind of rough them in. That'll work. Um, uh, there, there, maybe right there. Okay. And that kind of gives me a lot of like, okay, how long I'm spaced out. So I'm going to take that size four flat. I'm going to load my brush up with brown. And I'm just going to go straight down that line. Okay, for this one. The next one, I'm going to load up that brush up. It's so going to turn. I'm just going to use the edge to get a fainter line. And see here, I did one, one line and then I made another one right next to it. This one, I just did one line straight down. And same way with this one, I'm just going to take the edge and go straight down once. Okay. That gives us our tree trunks. We are going to clean off of our paint. We're going to set the brown side for a mo. And we're going to start filling in our leaves. So I'm going to start. I'm going to take that red. And I'm just going to make brush strokes. We're starting with the red, but that's just the first one. take our yellow or our orange actually and we're gonna start putting on
and, I, and right now this might look kind of crazy, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna put our leaves in and then we're going to go in and add our tree branches. So right now, it is just, we're adding in So, okay, now we're going to add some yellows. We're just going to go right on top. go back and we're going to add some more red, more red. some orange again. It's kind of just like
for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed um, painting our fall landscape. If you're interested in participating in our October virtual paint class, give us a call at 318-442-2483 to reserve your kit. Next month, we will be painting sugar skulls. All right. Bye and have a great day. Thank you.